feed. I'm Greg Bishop. This is WMAY. And joining us now is Shannon Adcock from Awake, Illinois. And before we touch base with her, we're going to uh, take in a little bit of uh, back and forth uh, from a video that the Illinois Education Association put out concerning groups that they try to tie together uh, in, a, in a way to uh, say that they're trying to harm teachers' unions and to make uh, schools less safe. So let's go ahead and uh, hear this, this, uh, this clip uh, and some of the initial reaction from one of the main targets of this video. This is from the Illinois Education Association, and then you'll hear uh, Attorney Thomas DeVore and Shannon Adcock briefly respond to that, and then we'll get reaction immediately from Shannon Adcock here on WMAY. Here's uh, that video. Van Gogh. Union is under attack. It's putting your students in danger, your communities at risk, and your lives on the line. The same groups who helped fund the Janus case are sowing division in our schools and on our college campuses. Meet Tom DeVore. He's an attorney from Greenville. He filed a lawsuit against 145 school districts in Illinois over the governor's mask requirement for students. This is DeVore's attempt to politicize our schools and our union, using COVID fears and frustrations to pit parents against parents and union members against union members. And he stands to make a profit while doing it. To sign on to the lawsuit, DeVore charged plaintiff groups $5,000 each, plus filing fees. Each district represents a separate plaintiff party. 145 districts means a huge payday for DeVore. His get-rich-quick scheme is earning him $725,000, even though the pleadings are quite similar for each plaintiff. Let's dive a little deeper. Why would DeVore be looking for all this extra cash right now? One reason could be he's running for judge. That's right, he's planning to fund an election campaign. Right. And it's almost like they were suggesting that people were donating to raise money for their parent group and somehow or another, that had something to do with me running for the court in Southern Illinois. It's yeah. absolutely ridiculous. It has it ridiculous. I don't. How do you even put that together? You well, know, and I think they're scared, Tom. I think that they're grasping at straws. They're trying to make us out to be some sinister beast when really we're parents. We just want the best for our kids. We're regular people. We want to be left alone. You know, like this just becomes so nefarious and they're showing their cards now. And that's uh, Shannon Adcock. She joins us now here on the WMAY morning news feed to talk more about this video. Shannon, thanks for taking time. Uh, when I watched this, somebody sent it to me and I, I, I pulled it up initially and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is. This is kind of flashy. It looks like a, a, a mock uh, detective board with, uh, you know, all kinds of strings attaching various names and groups together. And it's like, you know, uh, it should have been a, you know, a smoke filled room with somebody who's got red eyes pulling their hair out. Uh, it just it, it was really kind of over the top. And your organization, Awake Illinois, was named in it. And you're also one of the parents that are part of more than 700 suing 140 school districts over school mask mandates. So what's your reaction to this? Right. I'm glad that you picked up on that. Um, you know, the style of production was, I thought, sort of comedic. Um, but, you know, it, it's not our organization that was targeted ultimately. It was moms and dads, period. The union is getting freaked, understandably. Its members are fleeing in droves. And they're somehow trying to just spin this narrative that we're, that we're anti teacher. No, on the contrary, we want our children and educators to get back to what they're supposed to do, right? To be in school, to be getting a good education, not to be getting into all of this political garbage that has really oppressed and hurt children over the better part of two years. So they drew a line in the sand. Um, and I will say that, you know, as, as goofy as they tried to make it seem with the strings and yeah, the music, you know, if this piece wanted any credibility, they would have used statistics and data and they didn't, you know, this group represents teachers. They teach science and math. Well, the IEA clearly isn't very good at either of these subjects. If they were, they know COVID is not a reason to oppress children with these policies that we have been advocating against. We just want to be able to parent our children. And yet the children were the first to get punished. And now they're the last to be freed. 
So they drew a line in the sand, and that's fine. We're, we're up for it. We're not going anywhere. So I'm sure this won't be the last propaganda piece they put out. We're talking with Shannon Adcock from Wake, Illinois. Uh, tell us about the group, uh, because we, we started talking with you, uh, gosh, earlier this year maybe. Uh, it's a pretty new group, right? Yeah, we're totally new. We're grassroots. We launched in May. And we were just moms and dads who came together. A lot of us were involved in getting our schools reopened. And we were just looking around at these policies that clearly had political agendas attached to them. And we said, okay, how do we elevate our voices? Because parents are are not getting a seat at the table. The local school boards didn't want to hear from us. Our, Our legislators, our state government clearly was trying to keep us at a distance. We could go into the rabbit hole of each policy and where we think, you know, their mindset was, but parents just wanted a seat at the table. So we said, okay, we're, we're not going to go um, into the political realm with this, right? So if you're a Democrat, you're not going to rely on your Democratic Party. If you're a Republican, you're not going to rely on the Republican Party. We're going to go rogue and have a nonpartisan grassroots organization that will just help parents be able to advocate for their kids. That's it. So with the union taking the tact they're, they're taking here, saying that you're part of some you know, uh, sinister, nefarious, dark money conspiracy to tear apart teachers unions and to to make kids less safe in 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 uh, in their schools. Uh, they seem to be highlighting uh, the case that you're a part of that attorney Thomas DeVore is uh, currently pursuing in court. Um, are you guys looking to make schools less safe? No, of course not. No, absolutely not. What we're looking for is for people to actually look at data and statistics. We have 74 million kids in the United States. 771 children have died under the age of 18 with COVID to date. And it's tragic. The vast majority were medically compromised youth. So, you know, why are we pushing this narrative? We're two years in. If vaccines work, why is there still a problem? Parents are fed up. Educators are fed up. You know, that's sort of the missing component to this story is so many teachers are contacting us and other advocate groups and saying what the IEA is doing is no longer representing me. And they're leaving and they're disgusted. They want to get back to teaching. They want to see parents be partners in their kids' education. And so, you know, there is no, there is no intention to do wrong by children or teachers. Everything has to do with getting kids back on track. The kids are struggling right now, Greg. They really are. The mental health concerns throughout our communities, it's vast. We're talking with Shannon Adcock from Awake Illinois, a parents' rights group. Uh, you, you you said on social media you're not a hate group. And uh, in reaction to this video, you said that uh, you are merely the group that uh, represents parents just now kind of finding their voice, uh, so to speak. And uh, as you said, you've got even educators reaching out uh, saying enough's enough. But, uh, you know, in this video that the IEA put out, again, the, the state's largest teachers union, uh, they highlight dark money uh, and, you know, tie strings together with uh, – you know, Dick Uline and Bruce Rauner and Brad Halbrook. I didn't know Brad Halbrook was a bastion of dark money, but uh, your group's kind of lumped into this. Um, have you guys ever taken uh, money from Dick Uline or, uh, you know, from uh, the Koch brothers or whoever else uh, might be behind some of those uh, uh, still photos they pasted on that board? No, never, never, ever, ever. I bankroll this organization pretty much single handedly. That's the truth because I'm a firm believer in this advocacy not about money to me. Um, I am equal opportunity, though, as, as the president and founder of this organization to welcome any donation. So I don't care what your last name is. I don't care where you're from. We could absolutely use funds because our advocacy is growing and we're not going anywhere. So next year we have some great things in mind. But no, we don't take dark money. We are barely operating on any dollars, Greg. It's hilarious to me. You know, it's so flattering to see this propaganda piece because they really think that we are some sort of, I don't know, entrenched political group, nothing could be further from the truth. And so I, I, I didn't know half the people on that uh, propaganda piece. I knew Bruce Rauner because he was governor, but I didn't know half of those people. And it was funny because I had a friend of mine say, you know, you should send a thank you card to the IEA because you're going to get so many more donations now that people are aware that, th- that this is the battle line, right? People know which side of the battle they want to be on. And um, that's the side of parents, of kids, of prudent educators, not of this political arm 
um, that that goes under the guise of representing teachers. They're not doing that anymore. It's all political. Well, and it, it also wrapped in another group. I think is called the uh, Illinois Sports Central or something to that effect. And from my understanding, it's just you know somebody who's who's keeping an eye on sports and might have a different approach to things than the Illinois High School Association. Um, but uh, it seems that uh, obviously the Illinois Education Association putting uh, these these various groups and names of individuals, lumping them all together, uh, seeming to say that uh, they're wanting to make schools less safe. But again, your parents that's suing over these mask mandates, what ultimately do you want to see happen uh, when it comes to uh, your kids in public schools? Right. Well, but let's keep in mind that the IEA is very much tied to Pritzker. They've endorsed him. They've given him money. And so when you look at what we have seen in this state with such an imbalance of government, you know, the, the governor is being sued. The state board of education is being sued. The Department of Public Health is being sued. There has been such government overreach. And the IEA is very much connected to that. And when they put out the call, or excuse me, when they put out the notice, if you will, to some of their members saying, look, we're going to try and intervene in this Tom DeVore case, they said, just so you know, we're going to take the side of the governor. So they're, they're not even trying to hide it. They're absolutely trying to push this political agenda. And what I hope to see is through the court litigating this, judges you know, deciding on how much of this government overreach needs to stop, that in 2022, we are able to nip some of this in the bud. But it doesn't end there, Greg. It's going to take parents to continue to advocate for their children, for their fundamental rights to decide what is best for their children. The union was saying our students, our schools. No, that is not correct. These are. This is a community of parents, of taxpayers, of educators. They don't belong to the IEA. So in 2022, parents are going to be paying attention to things like what are the legislators going to support who are up in the midterms? School board races are in 2023. You have parents who are really getting organized because they just want to be respected as the ultimate authority over their children and their children's education. And they want to be partners with their children's schools. We have been shut out. Parents still cannot get into the schools to volunteer. They want to be seen as respected partners in their children's lives. And so I think in 2022, you're going to see that pendulum come back so that we can move our children forward beyond the pandemic. It's time. Shannon, I appreciate connecting. Uh, We'll definitely be talking again in the near future uh, about uh, the the ongoing litigation, but also uh, about uh, what we're seeing happen with public schools across the state and how the state legislature is impacting all of that. So, again, I appreciate your time. And if we don't talk before the holidays, enjoy and happy new year. All right. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Greg. Take care. You too. It is the WMAY morning news feed.